Hello, welcome back. Today we're going to be taking a look at the Porsche Taycan GTS Sport Turismo, the GTS version of the very popular Porsche Taycan Cross Turismo. Here at Inside EVs, we love Taycans, and the more they give us, the better. So this is a new variant of the Taycan. It's the GTS version. There's a sedan version and the wagon or Cross Turismo version, which we have here today. We've already reported on the sedan version of the GTS, and today we're here to take a close look at the Sport Turismo. Now there are some differences between this vehicle and the Cross Turismo, obviously. Uh, much of them are cosmetic on the outside. We're gonna go over all of the cosmetic differences and as well as the driving dynamics. The Taycan GTS Sport Turismo has the same front motor as all Taycans, but it has the rear motor that the Taycan Turbo and Turbo S have, which is slightly larger than what the 4S and the base Taycan gets. It has 517 horsepower, but with launch control overboost, that bumps up to 598 horsepower. How only, you only get that boost for about two and a half seconds, but it's good enough to propel the vehicle from zero to 60 in 3.5 seconds. We're gonna do a walk around go over some of the features that are different on the GTS. We're gonna take it for a drive, and then we're gonna offer our final opinion. The GTS Sport Turismo starts at $133,300 in the US, and it has the Performance Plus battery, 93.4 kilowatt hour. You can't get this with the base 79.9 kilowatt hour battery that's available in some of the lower trim option Taycans. Now, as far as where this fits in the Taycan hierarchy, it fits between the Taycan 4S and the Turbo. That's where the GTS fits typically in Porsche's line. They pretty much hold their nomenclature steady throughout their different products so people understand where the vehicle sits in the product line. But this is supposed to be the real sweet spot for people that love performance. It's not $200,000, but you get great performance, great for driving this on weekends, on tracks. This is supposed to have really the, the, the chassis, the suspension, everything's tuned for top performance in driving, and it's really supposed to be the enthusiast's Taycan. We're gonna take it out for a spin and find out if that's true. But first, don't forget, click that subscribe button and ring the notification bell so you don't miss any upcoming content here on the Inside EVs YouTube channel. The Sport Turismo has a unique sport design side skirts, and they're painted in high gloss black with GTS inserts. Around back, the rear diffuser has a similar design as the Cross Turismo, but the inlays are painted in high gloss black. The diffuser on the Cross Turismo is painted the color of the car. The headlights are tinted LED matrix beam with Porsche Dynamic Light System Plus. The Sport Turismo comes standard with 20-inch Taycan Turbo S aero wheels, but my car had the all-new 21-inch Spider Design wheels. The GTS Sport Turismo comes standard with Porsche's Sport Design front bumper and air intake. The side mirrors are painted to match the vehicle, including on the lower half. On lower trim Taycans, the lower half of the side mirror is black plastic. The GTS Sport Turismo also comes with an all new feature, a panoramic roof with sunshade control. It's an electronically switchable liquid crystal film that can change the glass roof from clear to matte. The roof is divided into nine segments and each segment can be switched individually so you can let in or block out as much direct sunlight as you'd like. The Sport Turismo's interior is mostly the same as other Taycans. It comes standard with the Sport Chrono package and the entire interior is clad with Porsche's race text which is basically another name for Alcantara. The seats also have GTS badging stitched into the headrests. So I'm here with Calvin Kim, product spokesman for Taycan. Now, Calvin, you've been gracious enough to loan me just about every Taycan that's made. We've done the Turbo S, we've done the Turbo, um, we've done the 4S, and just recently I had the base rear wheel drive, which I did range test and charging, and I love 
all of the Taycans. I've said this many times, it's my favorite electric vehicle. But now we have a new Taycan, the GTS and the, and the Taycan uh, GTS Sport Turismo, which we're standing here in front of. Why do we need another Taycan? Please tell me. Well, it's for us, GTS is kind of like the ultimate expression of performance and luxury and you know, capability all rolled into a very usable everyday package. You know, on the old ice side, internal combustion side, it would combine a lot of the attributes of the more sportier cars, like the turbos of the GT models, but maintain all the usability of the standard S or, or whatever model. Um, you know, why can't Taycan be that way too, right? I mean, I've heard from a lot of people that are kind of not very fond of EVs saying, oh, EVs have no soul, EVs aren't fun to drive. Well, I think the Taycan's proven that Yes, they, are, they can actually be very fun and, and enjoyable to drive. And the GTS kind of, we just really want to put a highlight over that and say that you can have a ton of fun. It can be very enjoyable. It can also be very an emotional uh, experience to drive. And you can actually get the you know, hairs on the back of your neck to stand up and why not? Yeah, well, all of the Taycan make the hairs on the back of my neck stand up and I love them. So let's talk a little bit about one last question. The, Porsche says that this is really the real driver's version of the Taycan, and, and to me, they're all driver's versions, but tell me a little bit specifically about why is this the driver's Taycan? Well, first off, it's got uh, a different suspension calibration, and for Porsche, it's the, the details are really what differentiate the model, the model variants from each other. Um, the GTS has its own unique suspension calibration on both the air suspension, uh, uh, spring rates and damping, even the dynamic chest control, as well as the torque vectoring system as well. So the ex experience is going to be uh, different from, say, either a Taycan Forest or a Taycan Turbo, which this slots right in between. In, in between. And obviously for the sport trees mode, like what we have here, um, for, the, for the person that wants more utility, a um, little bit more luggage space, the ability to haul bike racks, uh, haul a bike rack um, integrated into the car, but they don't want the ride height. You know, they know they're just go going on the pavement or they want to kind of do the split personality where they have all the usability on one day, but they also want to tear up the mountain roads the, the next day. I mean, yeah, that's, that's it. Well, it works because I just had the Taycan GTS, not the Sport Turismo, the sedan out on Willow Springs racetrack. And I can tell you it's dialed in it was a fantastic experience. Listen, thanks for your time. Appreciate everything. Keep up the good work with the Taycans. Thanks, Tom. You're very welcome. <laughs> I had the opportunity to drive the Sport Turismo on the city streets of LA, as well as some winding mountain roads, and the Sport Turismo did not disappoint. It has the air suspension and adaptive dampers from the Taycan Turbo models. However, Porsche tells us they've calibrated the suspension to make the car even more responsive and more connected to the road. The combination of the torque vectoring rear differential, rear axle steering, active front and rear roll bars, and the 21 inch spider wheels with massive 305, 30 ZR21 Pirelli tires in the rear combined to make the Sport Turismo possibly the best handling stock wagon ever produced. After a few hours of fun, I had drained the battery down to only 8%. So I found a local Electrify America charging station and plugged in. Figured it would be a good idea to make sure that the Sport Turismo charges like a true Taycan, and I figured I'd do an 8 to 80% charging test. I plugged in at 8% as I said and the Taycan quickly ramped up to about 250 kilowatts. That's what you want to see and I charged it up to 80% before heading on. All right so we're at 80%. We hit 80% in exactly 20 minutes. So from 8 to 80% in 20 minutes. We're going to unplug now continue our journey. That's pretty much in line with what Porsche promises. They said 5 to 80% in 22 and a half minutes. We did eight to 80% in 20 minutes. That's what makes the Taycan such a fantastic road tripping car. You know, I just added 72% state of charge in 20 minutes. And we've proven that the Taycan is a great long range vehicle, even though the EPA range ratings don't really reflect that. When we do the range tests on these cars, they always outperform the EPA by like 30%. Uh, we haven't done the range test on the uh, GTS Sport Turismo yet. We will as soon as they're available in press fleets to get for long-term loaners, but I would be shocked if they didn't 
outperform EPA like every other Tycon that we've tested. All right, so back on the road now, and uh, yeah, Tycon GTS Sport Turismo charges like a true Tycon. So that's it for our Porsche Taycan GTS Sport Turismo first drive review. And like the Turbo S, the Turbo, the 4S, the base rear wheel drive version, and the Cross Turismo, we're impressed. And we are happy that Porsche decided to give us so many variations of such a great electric car. Now, as far as the Sport Turismo and the Cross Turismo go, there's plenty of differences in those vehicles to give owners the opportunity to decide, do they want a car that maybe is better suited for the track, or do they want the Taycan that's better suited for light off-road duty? And in that case, you might want to opt for the Cross Turismo. Anyway, Thanks for watching. Don't forget, please click that subscribe button and ring the notification bell so you don't miss any upcoming content here on the Inside EVs YouTube channel.